Hey, everybody, it is the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my friend Amelia is here. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. How so, are you? Uh, I'm doing okay, too. Um, I've got a little bit less to settle into because uh, <laughs> my, my, my life hasn't changed this year. How about you? <laughs> My life has definitely changed a lot. I'm going to an evangelical college now, and I've I've never done that before. So that's been uh-huh. kind of an interesting thing all on its own. You said it funny. Can can I just go ahead and pounce on that? Like you didn't say I'm, I'm going to an evangelical college. You said I'm going to an evangelical college. Uh, what what what's yeah. going on there? So well, there's a couple things. Mm-hmm. Uh, every week they require chapels. And um, the other thing is that these chapels, while they're like, I love worshiping and that's all good. There's a lot of what I hear is law. And that's kind of a struggle for me as a Lutheran because I want to hear the gospel. And so I kind of have a hard time finding the balance between like figuring out if I'm being too critical or not open enough in something that I want to hear the gospel in. I like that. Um, and and it, it's going to actually kind of make us think and, and, and think with a little bit of nuance, too. Um, and, and that's challenging because it's, it's sort of easier just to use the labels to say, well, if it's got the name Lutheran on it, it has to be good. And if it's got the name evangelical on it, it has to be bad. Um, and um, even just sort of like the, the well, if somebody's making me do it, um, there's, there's this stubborn streak in the Lutherans. They're like, well, you can't make me. If it's, if it's good, it'll, it'll happen. But like, you can't just tell me I have to do that. That's a flaw. Um, and in all of it, um, I, I guess maybe let's start just by sort of recognizing, like, is the law a good thing or a bad thing? Um, what do you think? I think when used correctly, it is a good thing because it makes us look at ourselves and see our own sin and our need for God. That was actually Maybe. a really, really profound thing that you said. And, and it's true. Um, everything you said is true, but it's when used correctly, it's a good thing. Uh, because that, that means that if, if you're going to misuse the law, it, it's going to be bad. Um, so, so let's sort of recognize that walking through like the law is a good thing. God gives you 10 commandments that are actually like if you live inside of them, things are going to go better. Your neighbor is going to be served. You're going to hurt less. Sin breaks stuff. That's we, we, we should wrestle against sin. Um, but really what it ends up showing us is just how much we need a savior. We need Jesus because we can't fulfill the law. Now that's the right use of the law, the, the, the curb, the mirror, and the guide. Um, but if, if the law is being used for something else, well, that's, a, that's an entirely different thing. So if, if the law is being used to sort of, um, well, save yourself, then it, it's actually a curse and, and not a gift. Um, so as we're starting to sort of walk through this, like if, if I'm going to give sort of like two really sort of low hanging fruit statements, like if you do these things, you will know you are a Christian and you will be saved. That's Mm -hmm. a bad use of the law, right? Because like, I can look at it and say, well, so what does that mean then? So, and, and pick a, well, you're in college, let's just harp on the sixth commandment um i I, it's it's what we do um all of a sudden there's no mom and dad around and so like if you have avoided these websites and avoided these alone time things with your boyfriend or girlfriend well then you will be saved and and um first there's no jesus uh second there's no hope for anybody who happens to be a sinner and sort of the best hope for christians is to lie about what they actually really ought to be finally and and joyfully confessing before the lord inside of those i a poor miserable sinner so you can hear absolution so you can hear forgiveness and and at the same time um we can sort of recognize like the law is a good thing um and sort of say like so so here's college and and here's this first taste of freedom has it been used to to build up or has it been has it been used to actually make you feel uncomfortable in the chapel and if this is the case that is the devil at work but rejoice your lord seeks you calls you holy calls you worthy of love and, and that's not measured in in your your cleanliness by your actions but in your baptism you can mark who you are by what God has done for you in that font. And and there's law leading to gospel. Um, And and those are very, very different sermons talking about the same thing. Um, But that's a Lutheran preaching. And so now, now you have to go and and have to go and and hear somebody else preach. So um, I I guess uh, what what we can start to to say inside of this is um, just because an evangelical said it doesn't make it automatically wrong 
if it's if it's true it's true and if it's false it's false right but but we actually want to use then the scriptures to, to sort this out we want to rightly divide law and gospel as we're hearing it um not simply saying well if you're a lutheran you automatically get a pass you you couldn't possibly mess up and if you're an evangelical preacher you couldn't possibly ever tell me jesus died for me because all you have is the law um so so when you when you go um i, I would say you have to go so like there, there's no getting around it so when you go <laughs> listen but but like what are you listening for you know what i mean um yeah so, go I, ahead. Oh, sorry. yeah i i think when i go to chapel i tend to listen in a critical manner because it's it's exactly what you were saying like mm -hmm. me being a lutheran well i'm obviously always going to get it right and them being evangelical are obviously always going to get it wrong. So then I'm listening not to listen for anything good that's happening, but to specifically criticize what okay. they're saying, because I know that they're going to be taught, or at least I think I know that they're going to be talking about the law. All right. So, so maybe, maybe why not both? Um, so, so let's talk about the labels just a little bit. So the labels are supposed to sort of designate a safe place. Uh, Jesus says, my, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. The sheep recognize the voice of their shepherd. Um, first and foremost, like I, I would say your pastor is is your shepherd and and your pastor doesn't preach in that chapel it doesn't mean you can't go it doesn't even mean you can't hear good things there but it means like when i when i'm listening to my pastor i'm a little bit less guarded i'm still critical i i, I am if if because my pastor is a human and he can err um but but i i, I sort of have less guard up uh, around my pastor i i know sort of what to expect for him he's my pastor because he cares for me when i go to a Lutheran church, um, spe specifically like in my synod, especially, um, I, I can say, I, I know what I should expect to hear. Um, my guard's a little bit lower, not, not maybe as low as it would be with my pastor, but, but a little bit lower than it would be in just a place. I have no idea what's going on. Um, the labels don't give you a pass, but they're sort of like, is this a familiar thing? Um, you're still always wanting to listen. Um, this is why the catechisms are given to to lay people, um, because the pastor's held accountable. Like if if your pastor, however uh, impressive his name be, and, and I know your pastor, your old pastor, and I know your new pastor, and and um, both of them are good pastors. But like as much as I, I love and respect both of them and their work, like if they ever teach you something that goes against the catechism, like you're supposed to say like, hey, uh, flag on the play, can we talk about this? Um, when you go to an evangelical school, uh, you, you recognize like you you might not be hearing some things. You, you want to be critical. It doesn't mean that there won't be anything good there, but it's not bad to have a guard up. It, it really isn't. Even in your home church, your catechism is that. Uh, it, it's just sort of like if they say something right, can you give them credit for it too? Like, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I I think I can. I think it's just hard for me coming from a pride perspective too. Sometimes, right. like, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's a, yeah, <laughs> um, it's a matter of, I'm a Lutheran, and I'm like one of the only Lutherans here, so I have to stick by my beliefs, mm -hmm. and not be open to something that I don't think is going to be right, so then it kind of ends up being more about me than about mm -hmm. Christ and the cross than anything else, and so it's that weird perversion that happens. All right, so I want to do two things then. Uh, first, I want to sort of like, talk about the gates to the kingdom uh, and sort of set that aside. And then uh, I, I want to talk about actually how to parse and listen, because both of those are important things. So first, like, uh, it's the easy answer, but do you believe that the only people in, in the resurrection will be Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod? <laughs> no. No, me neither. I do uh, not. It, it, Right. Uh, and, and honestly, anybody that thinks that is wrong. Um, it, it's, it's faith in Christ. And, and so uh, the way that we've always marked Christendom is, is by the three creeds, the, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed. And I'm not even saying like you have to sort of um, acknowledge these, but if you can sort of say amen to all the points in the creed, even if you only want to talk about there's no creed but the Bible, if you can sort of acknowledge the truths of the creed, we'll see you up there. God be praised. Um, so if, if it's this case, it's not sort of like your your synod membership gets you into heaven, but, but rather it, it's faith in Christ. Then when we, we start to talk about this, what we should say is like, would the church, like all of Christendom, be better off if more Roman Catholics preached Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins? Evangelicals, Baptists, Methodists, like every time I hear a win from somebody, I'm going to say same team, let's go. Um, and, and like, God be praised for it. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm ecstatic 
to hear every once in a while um, that a Methodist got really, really mad because I said they don't believe that Jesus is truly present in the Lord's Supper because they read the Bible and they're like, of course he's present in the Lord's Supper. I was like, I know what your church believes. I know sort of, you know, the, the <laughs> politics within the denomination. Um, but like you heard the word of God and you believed it and you you looked at me in the eye and said, I'm a Methodist, but that's his body, that's his blood and it forgives my sins. I'm going to be like, that's great. Let's go. Um I want to take a win wherever I can get one. And so if you're in chapel and, and uh, whoever's up there talking says Jesus died for the forgiveness of sins, like that, that's one we get to say amen to. That's cool, right? That is cool. That is cool that we're united in the fact that all of us believe at least that Jesus Christ crucified died for us. Right. There's still other stuff to talk about. Like we, we can have sort of long and, and, and honestly fruitful and, and good discussions about like, I don't know when to baptize a baby or, or where, you know, mm-hmm. how to, to deal with all of those things. But at the same time, um, let, let's start with, with the same team. And, and that's a good place to start. Then we can have the talk where we need to. So maybe then when we, uh, when we are in chapel. Um, because we, we have to be there and, and we're hearing something. When, when you're in a church, you go to a funeral and it's not a Lutheran church. You go to a wedding and it's not a Lutheran church. Even just you're on vacation and you're not at your Lutheran church um, or your pastor's just doing something that sounds a little weird. So we're, we're going to sort of walk through the, the things that, that hold us up. First and foremost, um, the Holy Scripture is the word of God. Right. So so like this, this might be the first thing to, to sort of say. Like if they say, don't believe the Bible on this, like, Go ahead and throw a flag on the play. Be critical. <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and be real critical. I, I, and if they say like we should we should hear the Bible as if it is God's word and believe the things it says, I'm like cool. So so like that that's sort of like the the foundational stuff. And then how do we read the Bible? Because we get to recognize like the evangelical people, the the, the Christians, they have read the Bible. Sometimes sometimes maybe even a little bit more than us. Um, like it's it, it's it's something they take a great deal of pride in, and like we could learn from that'd be cool if we we paid that much attention to the scripture but we read the same book and we come away with very different opinions on stuff so as we do this um i I would sort of say like let's let's distinguish between law and gospel and this is sort of where where this got so um the rest of the class is now joining us to to where we started to pick up this discussion like how do i know law and gospel are being rightly divided um first we, we would sort of say um there's a difference between uh descriptive and prescriptive law um, the, the scriptures are, are descriptive some places and prescriptive others. So again, really, really easy one. Um, David, David, uh, saw Bathsheba bathing on the roof, coerced her into adultery and then murder her husband. This is a thing that happened, but please do not do that thing. This is, this is description. This is not a prescribed act. Like the, the prescription, like if you get a prescription from the doctor, it means do this. Don't do that thing, please. Um, there are places where God actually prescribes things. If he says, do this, it's good to do. Um, now, going forward with this, we can take what the scriptures speak to about the law and says that that by works of the law, no one will be made righteous. Um, all our righteous deeds are as filthy, filthy rags. We are saved by grace through faith and not by works, lest anyone would boast. The scriptures over and over and over again are clear that the law cannot save you. The law will, will tell you how things are supposed to be, even tell you what you ought to be doing. But if if the you doing works is a sort of tied to, to your being saved, that's not a right use of law and gospel. If if um if if you're you um even just sort of saying that the works of the law are, are proof that it worked, that's that's still sort of putting it on you to sort of demonstrate your salvation by your works. And so like, if, if I were to say, Jesus died for you and your sins are forgiven, I'd say, is that law or gospel? That, that's gospel. That's, yeah, gospel. I'm going to say, amen. And then if, if I'm immediately after that said, and, and you'll know it really worked if you have given up your vices. And now I'm going to have to say, now hang on. I, I know it really worked because Christ is risen from the grave. I don't want to measure this in myself because whenever I measure this in myself, you you started this out just the right way. I'm going to find out nothing but my shortcomings. Just find out how much more I need Jesus. And so if I'm trying to measure my salvation by my works, well, I am not the fulfillment of the law. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, right? right. So so if I'm being told to, to measure myself and, and my Christianity and my works, Christians will do good works. They must do good works and they should strive to do good works. But whenever we measure them, if we think we're coming away with it and saying, I've done enough, you're either not looking at the real law or not looking at the real you. 
And it's, it's a dangerous thing to sort of mingle the law and the gospel here. And, and this is sort of the, the big place where we're sort of told to keep the two separate is when it comes to the things of salvation, it is only the gospel, only the places where God is giving gifts. And so your baptism, the, the Lord's Supper, uh, even the preached word that, that forgives your sins, God does all the work. And then we just say, amen. There's no and then, it's just full stop. The law is still good. We'll still live in it, but but we never want to mix the two up. Um, it, it, it's sort of like you can like you can like olives and you can like Oreos, um, but you you shouldn't mix them together. It ruins both, right? <laughs> right. It's the long it's the law and the gospel here too. Um, they they flow together. They they really do. Um, but but when we sort of tie both into salvation, we end up coming away with neither. Yeah. So that's yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, good. Um, so, so when we're in chapel, when we're listening, like, what are some things that, that sort of might set off like your, 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 your warning bells? That's a good question. Um, I think things that they say, like, when you leave here today, you should be doing this and this better. Or like, there are some people in here who um, do not yet, like, believe are not, who are not yet saved, but they like almost believe, they sort of believe, kind of like measuring belief, that kind of thing. Mm. Like, how much do you actually believe in God? And how are you showing that to the world kind of thing? Right. So I, I might even been with them all the way through. I don't know what they said the rest of the way, but like if they said, you know, you're a sinner that Jesus died for, I'd be like, yeah. And they said, Jesus forgives all your sins. I'm like, yeah. And then be like, and, and <laughs> do you really believe this all the way? And now all of a sudden I'm, I'm on my, I'm on my heels. Cause do I, like, I, I struggle with doubt. I struggle with sin. I suck. I struggle with backsliding or, or any of the ways that you want to sort of address it. So what am I being told to look at at the end? Like this might be a place to be critical because if you're measuring your Christianity by your works, well, that's not a good place. Christians will do good works. It is the fruit of the spirit. Absolutely. But in this life, that that's not, perf that's not perfect yet. Um, and, and like, even the world knows this. Cause like they'll point at any Christian. They'll be like, yeah, but these are all the places they're a hypocrite. These are all the places I'm a hypocrite, okay. but is there Jesus for me? Like that's, that's the only thing I got to stand on. Yeah. Christ is our foundation. That is, yeah. that is the, 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 I feel like the, one of the biggest differences, not necessarily differences, but the thing that evangelicals are so frightened by is mm. that they don't have tangible evidence or proof or what they believe is tangible evidence and proof of like what if I don't believe enough like how do I know if I'm saved and I feel like they're always trying to answer that question and they turn to doing good works yeah. and they don't turn to like baptism or the Lord's Supper which are like Christ died on the cross that is that's it, tangible. right there. So right. I think that's, yeah. Somebody told me once, like, if we don't actually have something to measure, we'll find something to measure. And so like, if we don't, if a church body didn't have the sacraments, um, and so like in the evangelical church, these are sort of, uh, these are, are symbols, but they don't actually do anything uh, in most of their confessions. Um, and, and so communion is a place where we remember Jesus, but not a place where Jesus feeds us with his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Baptism is a, a pledge to Jesus that adults make as a sign of their faith, but it's not a, a faith bestowing act that God works for you. Um, I can, if I say, am I Christian enough? I can say, well, am I baptized? And I can say, yeah, okay. And, and then I don't want, I don't have to look at myself, but if you don't have those sacraments, it's always going to be measured in either your heart or your hands. Do you feel enough for Jesus or are you doing enough for Jesus? And, and mm. again, in this life, um, you, you're dealing with at best, at best an incomplete and, and in reality, something that's, that's not there all the way. And, and so this is probably going to be one of the biggest places where um, we're overjoyed to say same team um, and, and really glad when they hit the nose nail right on the head. But um for a church that doesn't have the sacraments, it, it's always going to be a, a little bit at the end of the sermon where, where you've got to measure something. And this is a place to be critical. Um, you can talk about Jesus dying on the cross all you want, but if you can't actually, if you can't actually get to that Jesus, if he's never actually delivered, if you can't ever know that you have him, um, there's always going to be sort of a sour taste at the end because he's just sort of nebulous out there and you gotta, you gotta grasp at something. Um, this is why Lutherans mm -hmm. treasure the sacraments the way that we do. And, and this is a place to, to, to be critical. Um, this is, this is sort of the, the dividing line in a lot of ways between our denomination 
and, and the others. It doesn't, again, mean not same team. It just means like, at the end, I don't have to measure myself. I'm, I'm really, really glad to measure that font. Yeah. And that's beautiful. That's, that is why I'm Lutheran right there is it's not that of the name of the denomination, but so that just specifically because I want to rest on Christ's promises and on his foundation and not on myself. And that's what we believe as Lutherans. And if it was a different denomination and Lutherans were more like evangelicals, then I would be that other denomination. Right. Yeah. We're, we're not talking party line too. And that brings a humility with it too. Don't you think like uh, at the end of the day, I just want to rest in Jesus. Like this isn't about being right. This isn't about having the right flag or pin or denomination. I just, I, I need the gospel. Um, it, it brings a humility because like your, yourself has to go away. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard for me. Humility, that is hard. Well, for me yeah, sometimes. nobody, nobody's good at it. That's why, like, humility is a passive thing. So, like, humility, it, it, there's Midwest humility. Um, I know West Coast, you you don't have to Midwest, but um, <laughs> like for us, it's always a fake thing. Um, humility is is the same root word as like being humiliated. Like you, you never choose mm-hmm. to be humiliated. That's done to you. Um, and, and in the same way, um. Hum, true humility is is put on you by God, it, and and it's not pleasant. It, it, it's good, but it's definitely not a, a feel good kind of moment. Um, it, it's when something in you has to to go away and die. But um, but God works good there. For for this though, it, it also means that that as you're going, um, it's not your job to con to, to convert anybody because first same team. It's also not your job to win every fight because this is about helping, not winning. Um, but, but that means like at the end, uh, when you're talking to your friends about chapel, when you're just even trying to process it yourself, like the, the questions is, you know, was, was God word good? Was God's word preached truly? Like was, or were they, were they avoiding it? Were, were law and gospel rightly divided? Um, the, the law, um, in all of its truth, but never to save me, uh, because the, the, the law can't give you salvation. The law can't even earn you salvation because you can't fulfill it. But was the gospel given to me? Was was Jesus preached for the forgiveness of my sins? And 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 then from there is is do I know how to get to Jesus? Like those are those are the things you need. Um and that doesn't mean you can't even end on, you know, now let's let's actually try to act as if this were a real thing and not a pretend thing. Let's try to love our neighbor, let's try to serve God, let's try to to be better people. That that's true. But like if you're ever ever sort of looking at that to measure your your salvation, that's that's not. Um, the, the discussions that you have then is, is where is Jesus and how do I know I have him? What does his word say about that? D- d- does he promise to be in certain places so I never have to wonder and I never have to deal with, with you know, my own inadequacies and, and try and dress them up so that, so that they're not? Right, yeah. He promises to be in, in the Lord's Supper and in baptism and in the church. And yeah, we can rest in that. Yeah. So keep going to chapel. I know you have to anyway. Listen, li- listen with your guard up, but but also listen, recognizing that, you know, same team and, and where there's a win, count it. And, and, and where there's not, you, you get to say, like, this is why it, it's it's not because I want to be superior. It's not because I, I want to have a fight, but it's because it's I desperately need Jesus. I do. <laughs> I do desperately so, need him. <laughs> he's for you. You're baptized. So let's let's go on that. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for talking to me about school. Can you come back and do it again sometime? I'd love to. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Have a good one.